Hello everyone and thanks so much for joining us for Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy and I'll be hosting today's show. First uh, weather graphic, uh, hazardous weather graphic uh, for tonight and tomorrow. Uh, no warnings or watches out but we do have a winter weather advisory here for St. Lawrence Island and the Bering Strait Coast which remains out until 6 a.m. Saturday morning and that's for uh, maybe another three inches of snow or so uh, with winds gusting to 55 miles an hour they'll create uh, visibility is less than a half a mile at times uh, especially up here along the Bering Strait coast uh, temperatures rose a shade above freezing about 34 at both uh, Savunga and Gamble and that really reduces any blowing snow as far as uh, cutting down visibilities go but if they fall back below, it could uh, still occur, and that's going to be mostly overnight and then should be over by tomorrow morning. And also here, the Chuck CC Coast, same thing going on, except winds uh, maybe not so strong, only gusting to 50 miles an hour, could pick up one to three inches of snow, and that's out until 6 a.m. Also, on the western Arctic coast here, that wind weather advisory, similar conditions, but uh, gusts 45 miles an hour, and that's out until noon tomorrow. And central Arctic coast there, that winter weather advisory is out until 6 p.m. Saturday. Look for winds gusting as high as 45 miles an hour. Uh, kind of a series of uh, impulses moving eastward in some pretty good westerly flow aloft here and affecting the Arctic coast, actually all the way to the east, but no advisories out for the east side. And satellite imagery showing a really weakening system pushing into a zone of a formidable high pressure area, a formidable high pressure area. And this is just really, uh, mid and high level clouds and maybe some light moisture but whatever fell was pretty insignificant and that's uh, actually uh, coming up toward the uh, Alaska range it could be kicking off a couple of showers there and down to the south though we got uh, upper level low centered south of Kodiak Island that brought about a uh, few hundredths of an inch today to Kodiak and it's ended some clouds down in here with some scattered showers to the south and then a much stronger system out here pushing northeastward into the Bering Strait and 40 to 50 mile an hour wind gusts this afternoon over the Seward Peninsula from the southeast temperatures in the upper 20s to mid 30s and St. Lawrence Island uh, again 55 mile an hour wind gusts temperatures rising in toward the mid 30s with uh, some snow and rain and snow but down to the Perbilofs dry conditions and windy for ADAC that uh, system pushing eastward but gusts 55 miles an hour this afternoon from the south but no rain yet the main rain precip precipitation area here is just to the west of them and east of Shimia so look for rainfall to start there at uh, any moment there for ADAC and uh, take a little longer for Atka otherwise the southeast coast uh, looking pretty good today actually all is southern Alaska looking pretty good here south central Cook Inlet uh, Copper River Basin on down the coast uh, looking pretty good. Had some fog, dense fog earlier today. Or dense fog advisor ended at noon in the greater Fairbanks area. And sunshine, temperatures 50s to lower 60s, uh, especially down over the southern southeast coast this afternoon. Day much like yesterday. Got some uh, low clouds creeping in toward the coastline there and also back up along the North Gulf Coast. Looks like it should stay mostly offshore here for the next, uh, at least through the weekend. Otherwise, high pressure, light wind conditions, that leads to areas of low clouds and fog that could develop anywhere over the interior during the overnight hours and then into sunshine in the afternoon. And then that trough along the Arctic coast, this system, that south to north flow, pulling the uh, milder air northward and the gusty winds and snow, mostly back to the west here. And we'll see for tonight, that kind of takes a jog to the east, the flow westerly coming over the top of this high both at the surface and aloft over the interior uh, will carry that eastward and some pretty good zingers uh, with that when you get a jet on the north side of an upper level ridge like this and this one's pretty good that's why the winter weather advisories are out because you got uh, 45 to 55 miles per hour blowing snow but not enough for winter storm warnings or blizzard conditions won't be that much new snow 
and improving conditions here even tonight, late tonight for St. Lawrence Island, taking a little longer. Could be mixed precipitation, could go either way here with that warm air surging northward and those higher freezing levels uh, coming into the northern Bering Sea. Kind of another wave down here to the south developing on this frontal boundary. So this portion hanging back to the west here, along with that low just uh, way back to the west near the Commodorskis. So look for some uh, clearing and not too bad on the winds actually here for the Perbolofs, even lighter winds. Light winds here over the southeast bearing, low clouds and fog uh, possibly forming here, actually anywhere from St. Lawrence Island right on down uh, to the eastern Aleutians and Alaska Peninsula there. And also over the interior for uh, late tonight, low clouds, fog again could develop, as I mentioned, anywhere in these areas, could maybe even Fairbanks again. And uh, light winds, maybe isolated snow showers over the eastern Alaska range, but again, nothing significant and uh, clear, dry, and light windy, or <laughs> with light winds for the southeast coast there. I uh, could see some low clouds and fog right along the outer coastline. Uh, some of that may develop over the inside channels, but uh, otherwise showers here near or south of Kodiak Island. Uh, tomorrow, some of those may clip the island, especially on the south side there. Otherwise, it'll be a generally mostly cloudy day the way it looks right now. Uh, if you see any sun, consider it a bonus. Better chance of sun in Bristol Bay there around King Sam and Igigik up uh, to, well, all the southwest interior here under the domination of high pressure and uh, variable clouds along the coast. Otherwise, partly in a mostly sunny eastward here across the Copper River Basin, including Prince William Sound, northern Cook Inlet. And then you start to run into more clouds as you get into the upper Yukon, Koyukuk Valley areas, and you get north of the Brooks Range. And, you got that uh, gusty wind condition with the uh, blowing snow all along the Arctic coast with advisory level blowing snow for the central and west side here. See a little bit tighter gradient there. So 40 to 45 miles an hour in those wind gusts and maybe 25 to 30 or 35 on the east side. And uh, otherwise, moving on to Sunday, nothing but a couple or just a couple of blue H's here on the chart and no gradient over the interior. So uh, hopefully whatever low clouds and fog form over during the overnight hours burn off to, or should burn off to just nothing but sun in the afternoon. So there'll be some clouds probably floating around uh, in this clear zone I have drawn here, but uh, not to the extent that they'll be along and off the southeast coast during the Gulf of Alaska with areas of fog, of course, persisting into the day. But another sunny day here for the Panhandle. Uh, look for two more days like you saw today down there. Uh, weaker front now along the Arctic coast, that stronger system pulling off to the northeast, but the frontal boundary stationary right along or just off the coast. So you could still see some blowing snow threats on the east side, demarcation point, Barter Island, Kaktovik, and uh, that lessens. Still uh, periods of light snow or flurries all the way back to the central coast, and that's starting to scatter out there on the west side. Much improved here, St. Lawrence Island, Bering Strait, Seward Peninsula, fog, low clouds. Uh, picking up a breeze here over the eastern bearing out of the east southeast, but still some fog and low clouds there. Kind of an impulse slipping up from the southeast will bring a chance of rain or showers or drizzle with uh, possible lower, well, definitely lower flying conditions than there otherwise would be or up in the interior here. And uh, light rain and wind's not all that bad here with this uh, stationary frontal boundary out over the Aleutians continuing to weak and kind of a series of weak waves rolling up. Uh, to the north-northwest as the main low center continues to weaken, pulls way back over the Kamchatka Peninsula area. So not bad over all of the interior uh, through the weekend. Taking a look at forecast lows for tonight, anywhere from 5 or 0 to 15 above up here in the northeast and uh, teens to mid-20s central interior, upper 20s to lower 30s south-central Alaska, chillier in the Copper River Basin, 20s here in the southwest, upper 30s for the Pribilofs, and upper 30s near 40 for the Aleutians. Arctic coast, uh, lows in the mid-teens east side, upper 20s west side with the warm southerly winds, and uh, 20s to mid-30s or upper 30s for the Panhandle. Highs tomorrow, much like today here on the southeast coast, uh, 50s to maybe lower 60s, and upper 40s to mid to upper 50s south central Alaska, especially in the Susitna Valley, and lower 50s Bristol Bay, otherwise mid to upper 20s for the Brooks Range, and look for 45 to 50-ish for the uh, upper Yukon, or the uh, Tanana Valley, and upper 20s, lower 30s for the Arctic Coast. Lows the following morning, uh, a little milder here over the interior, but still down to around 10 up over the Brooks Range, 10 to 15, mid 20s for the Arctic Coast. Lower upper 20s, lower 30s, south central Alaska, and highs about the same, maybe 55 to 63 for the Panhandle, 
55 to 60 for the Susitna Valley. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Saturday morning's flying weather graphic looks something like this. IFR here, Eastern Bering Sea from the Bering Strait, Chuck TC actually here, right on down along the west coast to the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula. And an area of IFR here, uh, southern Kodiak Island, marginal VFR over southern Alaska, and some VFR breaks here as you head north, especially up over the north slope eastern Arctic coast, and big VFR zone out there over the Bering Sea. And IFR right up along the southeast coast there uh, due to low clouds and some areas of fog. For the afternoon, that uh, hangs in there right along the coast, though, stays VFR over the inside waters. Marginal VFR up into Yakutat, uh, Cape Yakutega, maybe Cordova, definitely Montague Island, but staying out of Prince William Sound. VFR, Kenai Peninsula, and Kamishak Bay right up into the interior, back out uh, to the Selwick Valley, Kotzebue right on the edge. IFR, Kivlina, Point Hope, Cape Lisbon, Central Arctic Coast, and a little bit of VFR there over the North Slope. IFR, Eastern Bering Sea, and diminishing VFR here over the South Central Bering Sea. A lot of IFR on out to the West. And for Sunday morning, still a pretty good batch of IFR out here over the Western Bering. And then kind of areas of here, uh, pretty good areas of uh, IFR. Perloffs up to Nunavak Island, another here. Yukon Kuskokwim Delta, right on up across Norton Sound into the Kobuk Koyukuk Valley, Brooks Range Eastern North Slope, uh, Central Eastern North Slope, VFR back to the IFR along the Arctic coast, and mostly VFR over the east and southeast interior, and IFR remaining off the Panhandle. Sunday afternoon, again right along the coast here, marginal VFR. Now the IFR a little farther back to the west, and just clipping Montague Island there for uh, so south of Prince William Sound. IFR into Fognac Island, and it looks like probably Chiniac Marmot Bays. And for the Alaska Peninsula south side, marginal VFR, Bristol Bay, IFR, Yukon Delta from actually Cuscombe Bay right on up to the northwest coast. And taking a look at uh, passes, Anatovic, call it uh, occasional IFR tomorrow, but trending toward marginal conditions. And then I'll go optimistically for Adigan, occasional marginal VFR. And for Chilkoot and White, starting to out marginal, becoming VFR for both passes. Same trend for rainy, lowest conditions in the morning, better in the afternoon or by midday. Windy, VFR all day long. Isabel, VFR tomorrow. Saturday looks like a VFR day for Mentasta, another one. And Tanita, VFR, Portage, same forecast. Could be maybe a little marginal, possibly tomorrow morning, but generally it'll be a VFR day. And for Chilkoot and White, VFR. Freezing levels, uh, two to 4,000 feet over the panhandle at the surface. Again, right along the North Gulf Coast tomorrow morning, back down northern Bristol Bay, but back up to the northwest there, almost St. Lawrence Island, but not quite in the big area, warm air aloft up here uh, over the northern bearing, about 6,000 feet. And for icing, we've got some out here in the west with the system uh, out there, obviously, with uh, maybe a zone, a small zone, a considerable moderate, otherwise uh, just a threat reaching Atka. And could be some areas of uh, light to isolated, moderate rime icing or so here, mostly up north of the Brooks Range with the uh, jets and a series of disturbances passing eastward along with that westerly flow. High pressure, no icing over central southern Alaska, the Panhandle. Jet stream, upper level ridge right in this area. And we've got south flow out here. That's why we have such high, for the highest freezing levels out there over the northern bearing tomorrow, that southerly flow. Actually, cooler air now coming in underneath. A week low south of Kodiak Island, 50 knot northeast jet from the Kenai Peninsula along the Aleutian Range. Otherwise, the Pacific or the Arctic jet here coming over the top of that ridge, 100 knots along the Arctic coast. And at 9,000 feet, high pressure over the interior, south to north flow, 45 or 35 to 15 knots here in the Bering Sea, southwest 60 up there along the uh, western Arctic coast, and light winds for the panhandle. And taking a look at uh, 3,000 feet, same pattern here, high pressure, central interior, another center there uh, just south of the Kenai Peninsula. Flow around that, pretty light here under the big ridge at, or the area of high pressure, but increasing southeast 25 to 35, 40 to 50 here coming up to the uh, Bering Strait, and then westerlies 45 to 50 from the Brooks Range to the Arctic coast. And turbulence wise, uh, pretty good moderate chop here with those winds. Uh, St. Lawrence Island, Seward Peninsula, up into the northwest to the western Brooks Range, also the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. 
and looking uh, pretty choppy here, especially uh, central and eastern Aleutians. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecast and ice conditions. On March 11, 2011, a powerful tsunami hit Japan, destroying cities and villages. As the water receded back into the ocean, it pulled what remained of buildings, cars, boats, and homes along with it. Scrap metals, plastics, and objects of all shapes and sizes either sank near the shore or floated away. In the days that followed, large masses of floating debris could easily be seen by satellite imagery and aerial photos. In the wake of this disaster, NOAA is assessing the potential impact that the debris may have on U.S. shores. So, where will this debris go, and when will it get there? To help answer those questions, scientists are using computer models to estimate the debris's path, using its starting location in the tsunami zone and historical weather and ocean conditions. The findings are that some debris could pass near or wash ashore in the northwestern Hawaiian Islands as early as this winter. Debris may also approach the west coast of the United States in 2013 and potentially circle back to the main Hawaiian Islands in 2014. But scientists caution that there are limitations to what computer models can tell us. Now that the debris has moved out of satellite view, and with currents and winds in the Pacific constantly changing, there is no guarantee that the debris will stay on the predicted path. Items will sink along the way, or break up and disperse in many directions. Despite these unknowns, NOAA and its partners are collecting data, assessing possible impacts, and making preparations in case debris does wash ashore. The 2011 tsunami in Japan reminds us that the devastation that happens on land can also become a marine debris issue at sea. Imagine all of this underwater. In a major tsunami, it could happen. In this part of Washington state, it's happened before, hundreds of years ago. Sometime in the future, it will likely happen again. But we can be ready. If a tsunami strikes, this school will provide a place for people to ride it out above the waves. We're in Westport, Washington, and right behind me is the very first tsunami vertical evacuation center in the United States. Tsunamis are a potential hazard for low-lying coastal areas. That's why many coastal communities have plans in place to get people to safety, high ground or inland, where they can be beyond the reach of a tsunami. Often there are signs showing where to go and where to gather. Most tsunamis are caused by underwater earthquakes along subduction zones, where two of Earth's plates collide and one is forced under the other. Westport and other Pacific Northwest coastal communities are especially at risk because one of these zones lies just offshore. It's called the Cascadia Subduction Zone. An earthquake here caused a tsunami in 1700 that flooded shores as far away as Japan. Experts say it's just a matter of time before it happens again. Since the subduction zone is so close, a tsunami like the one in 1700 could strike before people in some low-lying areas could get to high ground or inland. And Westport doesn't have a lot of high ground or easy routes inland. If we get an earthquake or a tsunami, we're gonna get a lot of water in the area really quickly, and we needed a place to go. So our community built this brand new school and above our gym and cafeteria, we have a roof. And so the idea is that we'll get all of our students up 
and anybody from the community who needs to get up, they can get up there as well. Ocosta Elementary School might seem like a normal school, but look more closely. It's engineered to withstand monster waves. Tsunami vertical evacuation shelters must be able to resist the powerful forces that a tsunami brings. Hydrodynamic, buoyant, hydrostatic, and debris impact forces and strong currents. They're also designed to help people get to safety quickly. There are four big staircases on each corner of the building, and each one of those staircases is eight feet wide, and we can get the whole school evacuated in about four and a half minutes. Everybody should be at a zero. On the roof of the building, there is water and food and buckets and shelters and tarps and blankets and different things so that we can be up there for two, three, maybe four days while we wait for rescue. You can go to the top and you know you'll be safe. It, it feels really nice to have a special building because you feel protected. This community decided that a tsunami evacuation center was important because they didn't have anywhere to go and they decided to use their money to build the building. The additional cost is anywhere between 10 and 20 percent of the actual building cost itself and that's really a sound investment for a lot of protection. You may be there a while, but you're safe and you're secure, and that's the most important thing. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Today's sea ice analysis. Now the south edge here, or the, well, it's almost up to the south shore of St. Lawrence Island. Just still a, uh, fair, a few miles south of the uh, south side there. But uh, strong southerly winds through the weekend or continued southerly flow above normal temperatures. That's forecast to push it back to the north-northwest, 30 to 40 mi nautical miles. Uh, by Monday is what I saw in the forecast. And then uh, by early next week, the winds are going to become more easterly, and that should uh, kind of slow that down or halt it all together. Moving on to coastal water forecast, north winds 20 knots here on the southern southeast coast, seas 8 feet, and northwest 15 to 20 with 4 to 6 foot seas on the north coast there. I'm sorry, 6 foot seas here on the south coast. North 15, northern and central inside waters and really light winds here for the southern areas. And for Sunday, northeast, still light winds here, 10 to 15 knots on the south coast seven foot seas, northerlies 15 knots for Clarence Strait, Stevens Passage. Small craft advisories, a tighter gradient there, so north 25 for Lynn Canal, otherwise northeast 15 to 20 for the north coast. And for Cook Inlet tomorrow, north winds 10 to 15 knots, north 15 there for Kamishak Bay, about the same for the Barren Islands, roughly 10 knots out of the north. North northwest at 10 for the north Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, variable to northwest breeze, barely a breeze at 10 knots with seas at 2 feet. Those become more northerly on Sunday, really not much of a change at all here for the north Gulf Coast as well, seeing really light 10 knots, north 10 knots, seas 2 to 3 feet, all the way down to the Barren Islands, Kamishak Bay no different, north 10 with 2 foot seas, and Cook Inlet, north winds 10 knots, 2 to 3 foot seas. And for Bristol Bay tomorrow, northeast 15, and for the Alaska Peninsula, we've got easterlies at uh, 20 knots with uh, seas up to 10 feet on the Pacific side of the peninsula. And from Castle Cape to Sitkanak, northeast 20, Northeast 15, Kodiak Island, sees around 5 feet. And for uh, Sunday, those winds on the east side of the island here pick up about uh, a little bit, but only at about 20 knots with 6-foot seas, staying northeast 15 in Shillikoff Strait. Same wind pattern and speed there for Bristol Bay, northeast 15. And small craft advisories now from Sitkanak all the way down to Cape Sarachev as those easterly winds increase to 25 knots and seas build to about 8 feet. North side of the peninsula, east at 20. And for the uh, western Aleutians tomorrow, we've got, uh, well, west of uh, Amchitka Island, we've got 
uh, southeast winds at 30 knots, and then from Amchitka eastward here, pick up the southeasterly gales at 35 knots, all the way over to Atka, say, and uh, then you down to about 30 knots here from Winmac Island, and then turning east from Alaska Island, 25 or 20 to 25 knots. And the outlook for Sunday, east 25 on Alaska Island, east 30 Wilmac Island, and east southeast at 30 for Adak and Atka. And those seas 11 to 16 feet, turning north at 25 here from uh, Adak over to Amchitka, then from about Kiska on to Shimia, really light southwest at 15, but those seas still up around 11 feet. And for the southwest coast, south of Minnebac Island, light winds out of the east, otherwise north side 20, increased to 25 knots for St. Lawrence Island, south 25 for St. Matthew Island, and southeast at 20 knots for the Perloffs. And then the forecast for Sunday, 5 knots for Norton Sound, east 20 here for the southwest coast, as well as St. Paul and St. George, southeast 30 for St. Matthew Island, and then back down to 15 knots for St. Lawrence Island. And for the area from Wales up to Cape Thompson, south 30 knots, then southwest 30 knots from Cape Thompson right up until you get to the central coast and they bend around to the west at 30 knots and southwest 30 knots for the remainder of the coastline. And Sunday, those come down a little bit here, 25 to 30, still good for brisk wind advisories and coming down to uh, 20 knots on the central coast, still carry some brisk wind advisory level winds here on the west side and then Cape Beaufort to uh, Cape Thompson southwest 20 and south 20 all the way down to Wales. And for tonight, again, uh, system up here to the North Wind Weather Advisories, uh, actually from St. Lawrence Island up the western to the central Arctic coast, uh, ending from southwest to northeast here over the next 24 hours. Otherwise, high pressure areas, low clouds and fog could form anywhere in the interior, on down into the Gulf of Alaska, a few showers uh, near Kodiak, and uh, wind and wet conditions out west. That doesn't really move much in the next couple of days. A few showers increase here along the Alaska Peninsula to Kodiak, Mostly sunny, central southern Alaska, storminess up along the Arctic coast, and the outlook for Sunday, dry over the interior. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.